And we are back with our second conversation this morning. It is all about the Belize Book Industry Association and World Book and Copyright Day. Joining us in studio, we have the BBI member and author, Ms. Ishel Pot. Put? Pot. Pot. Good. And uh, BBI president and principal libra librarian at the Belize National Library Service, Feline Cayetano. And his son is cousin. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good, morning. <laughs> Good morning. So, World Book and Copyright Day. There seems to be a day for everything now. So, let's get right into it. Uh, what does this mean? Is this something that is being uh, thoroughly celebrated in, in the UN, UNESCO, different countries outside of that scope? What are we talking about this morning? Worldwide. Worldwide. Wor worldwide. I cannot necessarily pinpoint the day when it originated, but it was or it originated based on different authors who were born around that time, around that date. And this year, every year there's a theme. Mm -hmm. This year's theme is indigenous mm -hmm. languages. And mm -hmm. what better place to celebrate that than Belize, right? We have so many indigenous groups, uh, so many of our own languages that have been here from, from forever. It seems like uh, the world is, is changing rapidly and mm -hmm. um, we're more investing in um, tech, technology, your phone, media. right? Um, mm -hmm. E-books, if you will. So how does the idea of a nice crisp book and copywriting and publishing on these pages um, remain relevant? You know, I think one of the things is even as we look at the trend with digital media, it's still writing. Mm -hmm. It's still creating. It's just in a different format, which we have to adapt to as well. And it remains relevant because there are constantly stories to tell, information to share. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is a real-time shift that this new generation, while we have, you remember when I may. 12 and this happened this new generation i'll be like hey check out my memory for facebook <laughs> it yes. still counts as a story as mm -hmm. a way that we're talking as a way that we're communicating but there is always a place within our society for the written word and mm -hmm. stories to be told and held because that is how we keep uh, continuity that's how we mark history that's mm -hmm. how we mark time mm -hmm. um i know we have a book launch coming up for um based on hurricane hattie my mother lived through hattie and there's always this before the hurricane and mm -hmm. after the hurricane segment. Mm -hmm. And for this generation, it will be before the pandemic and I after the pandemic. Yeah, and so right. there are stories there that must be told and mm -hmm. captured. And so there is great importance around being able to honor, commemorate, but also create a space for Belizeans and authors around the world to tell their stories in their language from their perspective. Mm -hmm. There was a point in time I know you're very involved in the library <coughs> movement. I also worked at the Leo Bradley Library. <laughs> and this was many moons ago, right? At the time, there were still people who accessed the library for information, either for leisure purposes, they just want to borrow a book and read, or they're in there for research or what have you. I have observed albeit the fact that I'm no longer involved with the library movement, I have observed where perhaps people are accessing the library for different reasons now. Mm -hmm. Simply because with the advent of digital media, people aren't relying on volumes of encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. They're no longer accessing the library to borrow books when you could simply purchase a book online. Yeah. Or you could simply share a book digitally mm -hmm. with your colleague on a phone or a mm -hmm. device or what have you. So my question is, how do we keep alive the culture of reading when you have all of this information at your fingertips in smaller bite-sized chunks yeah. as opposed to sitting down with an entire 400-page hard copy <laughs> and gleaning information that way? Mm. Listen, this is exactly what I was talking to somebody about it. I was trying to to give them the encyclopedia culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was saying, you know, there was a time when there would be a salesman coming to your house. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you could if you could afford it, you, you would yeah, you would thing. you'd buy the whole set. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and you'd have to thumb through that or go to the library and you know, mm -hmm. boom, you find that information and now we have it right in our fingertips. The library is like, uh, the analogy that I make that's the easiest one for everybody to understand is music. Mm -hmm. Music didn't go away, right? It went from Change LP form. to, yeah, to mm -hmm. what is the, what's the next one called? To cassettes. Uh -huh, to, to cassettes, MP3s. to CDs, the yeah, all of that. But there. music did not go away. Now the important part is, is licensing to make mm -hmm. sure that those who make it get con compensated. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up an important point. You're talking about sharing books. I hope whoever and however you're sharing it, there's a compensation involved in that. Mm -hmm. So because we okay. as the writers, you know, we feel that somebody pirates our book, somebody pirates whatever it is that we're creating and we don't see it. And so therefore, what is the incentive beyond what it always was, the joy of it, or in my case, therapy, you know, when it comes to writing, what is the incentive financially to continue to create things right. if people will pirate it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's, a, I'm, I'm veering off, getting back, <laughs> you know, when it comes to libraries and how people are reading, we as librarians are concerned that people are reading, no matter how you're reading, mm -hmm. whether you're reading on your phone, whether you're listening to an audiobook, whether you're accessing the hard copy, you know, you all, I think it's the first that I'm here wearing glasses because I, I, I want to read some of the activities for book week. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, um, kerosene lamp with the little yeah. ladybird seeds, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. That's what we had in our house at dark. You, you're, you're not going to turn on the light. You'll have your lamp and the lamp will be turned off at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So my brother and I, we would have a, a battery kids don't try this at home <laughs> right you have a battery a wire and a small bulb mm -hmm. and so i'd be right there under the covers reading <laughs> line for line exactly exactly <laughs> until the lead bulb just you yeah. know Blow. my fingers it got too hot like yeah. i said kids don't try this at home <laughs> do not do, do not, not. Right? Do not. <laughs> so well, see, my but that's how that's how hungry you were mm -hmm. to consume mm -hmm. the written mm -hmm. word yeah. and that is what i'm asking generally i don't know that kids have that same kind right. of passion because yeah. I could tell you as a child growing up my main thing aside from the the um Tom Sawyers and the Huckleberry Finns and what have you were the Caribbean books mm -hmm. mm. your VS Nepal yeah. you have your um, Z Agel, mm -hmm. Mark Anthony and all mm. those were the books that I grew up on and they weren't available in digital form, right? Yeah. So <laughs> but you know, the important part of, of promoting uh, literacy, mm -hmm. reading, mm -hmm. is that it has to start from very young. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I meet people who would say, oh, Asha, you know, you're a writer, you read. How do I get my child to read? And I go, ah, how old is your child? 14. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, children at an early age enjoy reading because reading builds memories at that um, three to five, it's not really about the story, it's mm -hmm. more about the time that is being invested to mm -hmm. spend with them. Mm -hmm. And in that action, they fall in love with the stories. But as Feline said, you know, the library has innovative activities that it continuously takes mm -hmm. on to promote reading and literacy. I think I've seen on the calendar, there'll be bookmaking, mm -hmm. there's dramatic storytelling mm -hmm. that's taking place at the libraries, mm -hmm. there's launch of books, there's mm -hmm. a space for authors to come in and uh, record digitally their stories mm -hmm. and share and so it's kind of how do we impress upon a society that is fast moving yeah that is constantly going yeah. that there still needs to be a space that we're slowing down mm -hmm. with the younger generation and reading with them mm -hmm. and even as adults when do we slow down yeah. mm -hmm. and feed our brains mm -hmm. you know it's easy to sit down and hit the tiktok videos for like two hours straight and don't know where the time got yes but when are you investing in actually Book. reading mm -hmm. whether it's leisure reading whether it's professional reading whether it's you know personal enhancement there's so many ways that we can use books but how are we actually creating that space for ourselves to be able to That's invest? The challenge. Yeah, and it's it's more not so creating the space because I believe that the library does have really yeah. good events that I think I mean I, I think it's cool, right? But how do you make the younger generation think it's cool to come to a poetry night or to come to a, a, a reading of a, of your book that is coming mm. out? How do we make them feel like it is a a space where they should invest their time in i think you have to make activities relevant and i'm sure you know mm -hmm. some of the things that the library does one of the things that i do in Bamopan is i host a um 
uh, rhythm and lyrics, mm -hmm. uh, live poetry and music. Mm, yes. And so that makes it relevant, you mm -hmm. know, or it makes it where young people feel connected. Because sometimes when we think about Belizean literature, when we think about Belizean art, mm -hmm. all we think about that, oh, somebody want to play broken music, you yeah, hear about a story in a rural Belize and how you had to walk two hours to catch a bus and paddle and do <laughs> yes. it. Yes. And yes. Those, are, those are parts of Belizean stories. Fair, but that's typecasting and stereotyping. Yes. If you're going to so, lock them into one particular So there, there is that need to really create the space where our young people see themselves as Belizean storytellers, mm -hmm. know that they have Belizean stories to yeah. tell, and have a voice for what is taking place with them because they are going to um highlight what is taking place in belizean society and so we need we need to do that and respect mm -hmm. those things that are being created by belizean authors that might not fit what other people think is a belizean mold but is by all intents and purposes belizean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we're coming down to the to the world book and copyright day and i know that uh essentially you are all um, going to be having several activities surrounding this day uh, before we get into those activities, I, I really wanted to touch on something that Pauline said, which is um, copywriting and, and pirating and making sure that the creator gets their, their due diligence, right? It but how do you, Yes. <laughs> but how do you also um, balance that with the freedom to learn and making sure that education and, and access to these particular stories are, are for the wider public? Not everybody can afford a book or not everyone can afford to to go to the library, do you know? I, I'm just trying to ensure that at the end of the day, we are making sure that everyone is able to have access. Well, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Science, Technology, <laughs> you know, has made that quite easy because mm -hmm. of EBSCO, right? Mm -hmm. What so, is EBSCO host, Feline, for our viewers that do not understand oh what that goodness. is? Oh my goodness. In a, not, yes, in a nutshell, they are, in a nutshell listen, a lot of people don't know. That expression I just gave you is, is to your camera. Right <laughs> the one is like... <laughs> <laughs> so EBSCOhost is a database of databases. Mm -hmm. So it has multiple industry information. So let's say you're a mechanic. Mm -hmm. Everything, all the industry papers that you would ever need to read, articles, books, etc. Let's say you're a nurse. There's a whole portal for nurses. So it, it you know... You're, you're just like leisure re reading. There's literature there for you. You know, if you need the research papers, it's right there. Mm -hmm. And so again, the ministry with the library, you know, brought EBSCO free for everybody. So you'd have to go to your local library to get the username and password. But truth be told, I have some of my works in there too. Yeah. Right? But then I hit, I, I'm, I'm an audio book consumer. Mm -hmm. I, but so the AI voice saying my poem, I'm like, eh, cringe. <laughs> You know, I, they, they, you, you have to listen to it because there's one in, with some Garifuna words in there. Mm. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, AI is a whole other topic. Yeah. A whole other topic. And Ishel brought up a point that is near and dear to me, which is writing. Mm -hmm. You know, without, in order to have the word, it must be written. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Belizeans, we have a kind of a cultural self-esteem that we need to raise so everyone knows that what they have to say what they have to write is valuable mm -hmm. and we do want it in a book because we've noticed we've seen the longevity of a book right yes the longevity of a story but by the time i tell you the story and you Don't tell change. the story something else mm -hmm. right so those are some of the things do we do mind. enough to appreciate and celebrate belizean authors mm. I say that because, for instance, when, when Said Musa wrote his autobiography with mm -hmm. Malice Tanon way back in 2008 or 9 or whenever that was, that was a moment in time where Belizean history, at least through the eyes of a former prime minister, was being told. Yeah. When you look at the books, that are written by Godfrey Smith, for instance, yeah. right? Mm. Those, again, offer unique perspective into Belizean or regional history. But are we giving them their flowers while they're still able to smell and enjoy and appreciate being recognized? Huh, you're talking about the dilemma of, uh, of any and all writers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as a writer, I published my first book in mm -hmm. 2004. And I... 
as a newbie librarian, mm -hmm. one of the things that we had was a regional cooperation. And so I went in, I was in El Salvador at, at their national library. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked around and I saw huge poster size, like, like the size of this uh, mirror right here behind mm -hmm. April. Mm -hmm. But, you know, different orientation. But I saw these huge posters of their national writers and I got excited and I said, mm -hmm. Where's ours? Where, where are our Belizean authors? Sorry, sorry. And yeah. so luckily, my supervisors at the time said, OK, listen, you're going to run out of wall space, which eventually did happen. <laughs> but you know, we're going to support you. We're going to support this initiative. So we had a thing called Meet the Author. Mm -hmm. And Meet the Author brought these living legends to speak about their writing and to you know, say, here's the inspiration, have a huge portrait. We came here and open your eyes, of course, you know, different hosts at the time and would unveil the portrait yeah. before we did the actual event in Belmopan. Mm -hmm. And those were some exciting times, you know. Yeah. So we, we still, of course, do some of those events yeah. without the big portrait because, like I said, we ran out of wall space, <laughs> you know, but hopefully somebody will hear this. We'll invest a couple million dollars for a national <laughs> library to be built. We'll have more wall space, and we could continue to do that. It's a dream. You know? It's the dream. But you brought up another important point, which is what happens after the launch. After mm -hmm. the launch. You know, mm -hmm. that is always a thing. The launch is such an exciting time. You know, as, as was stated, we'll have a book launch on Monday uh, for the book about Hurricane Hattie. And after the launch, the author then has to go to different parts of the country. The author then has to go into schools. You know, it would be ideal if the government would then support this work or an excerpt of the work to be placed in schools as part of the curriculum. Yeah. One, you know, once properly vetted, etc., etc. But we don't necessarily have a life cycle for the book type of culture. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? I think I, I'm still lost on this whole idea because... I look at myself as a child, I look at myself now as a parent, and again, I look at how things have changed considerably since then, right? Mm. Like, I could value someone who appreciates the Lord of the Rings or the Harry Potter series in the hard copy versus someone who could tell you what's seen in the movie and yeah. what have you, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Because for me, I think... Being able to use your imagination comes from being able to read. Mm -hmm. Being able to, to expand your vocabulary and, and be able to express yourself articulately comes from your ability to read. Mm -hmm. If it comes ready-made with all the graphics on the TV, you really don't learn anything. Not even the plot. <laughs> because you'll forget well, it by the so time... It's a made-for-TV plot at the end <laughs> of the day as well. Yeah. Right? Um, it, it, it shifts around. So, uh, the point that I'm making is that I think while technology has brought us a long way, it has, in essence, allowed us to lose some of the values that we mm. have in terms of holding dear to us the power the of the written word. Mm -hmm. Mm. Would, we, would we all agree on that? Or? <laughs> I love the smell of a good book. A good, fresh, clean, <laughs> hard press copy. printed, hard copy book. <laughs> and I'll just press it on my face. But in terms of, I, I do agree. I do agree that it's a, I think it's a lost culture. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what I'm and, saying. And, um, I, I know that, for example, um, children that have to learn to read, especially in this uh, post-pandemic era, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're struggling because, you know, the, the endearment of sitting on my lap, showing you how to read, that, that was lost for a couple of years. So then how do we get that back? And that's what I, I guess that's what I was trying to ask this mm -hmm. entire time. How do we get people to want mm -hmm. to pick up a book and read? How do we get people to care that the book is there. It reminds me of that um, book, The Book Thief, mm -hmm. right? Mm. And um, it reminds me of a time when during history when certain books were, were um, made not accessible because of the political uh, bureaucracy that was taking place. And so you burn all of these books that don't agree with the political masses. <laughs> We're living in such a liberal era where all of this information is accessible to us. So why aren't we taking advantage of that? Mm. Well, it goes back to what Ishelle was saying again. <laughs> it starts from young, you know. That's why there are outreach programs mm -hmm. through the libraries, you know, to pregnant mothers, let's say, mm -hmm. in hospitals, you know, where by here the, the mothers need to learn. Mm -hmm. Even when the baby is in the womb, yeah, you, you know, you need to read to the baby. Mm -hmm. Me, I was living in Belmopan while pregnant, and I was concerned that my child would not get as much garifuna in their life. Mm -hmm. 
right? So I was listening to this Garifuna Bible, reading Garifuna aloud, because I knew from a previous library conference I went to that even in utero, this baby would recognize voices, mm -hmm. would recognize mm -hmm. sounds, and, and the language acquisition starts even from the womb. Yeah. Right? So, but nobody's telling every mother that. Like, listen, talk to your, if you're not in a place where you're <laughs> going to learn this language or your child will be exposed even to these different languages, have your child around that in the womb. Mm -hmm. You know, practice reading. And then above all else, mimicry. If your parents, if your child does not see you reading as a parent, they're not going to read. Yeah, you know, that's true. It's really indicting for us as a people when we realize we had daily newspapers at one spell and now we don't have daily newspapers. You know, that says a lot that we as a culture, we've lost that reading culture. So let's get into, because we're, we're, we're out of time, but let's get into the actual reason why we are here, which is to <laughs> talk about your book week. And to talk about what we are doing, what can we look forward to in terms of activities? Michelle, you want to read this? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the main activities, um, this, this we are taking place, are it's through the library services. The mm -hmm. libraries will have different activities across. Um, the Belize Book Industry Association will be announcing the winner of the Literary Prize. Okay. Um, and that is a short story prize that the BBIA offers. The first prize is $1,000. Belizeans write in, submit, the entries are vetted. Okay. And then there are, there's, um, at this year we have our first place winner. And you can see the list of activities on the screen. So the one that we do want to highlight is uh, this Friday on the 21st of April, the Mexican Institute is having a lecture presentation um, by a renowned poet, a facilitator, who's going to be talking about the process of creativity and also creating in her native language. Oh, nice. um, and that should be, that's open to the public. Um, and that should be one of the highlights that are taking, that's taking place. Mm -hmm. We do have the launch of um, My God, The Tree and Me, a story about Otto Wade and Hurricane Hattie. That's by Miss Jennifer Marie Woods Cadle. And that's taking place on April 24th. Um, there's a book making and how to care for a book. <laughs> and that's taking place at the Turton Library on April 21st. Um, it's invitation only, so if you're listening and you want to be a part of that, you can contact the, the Turton Library and see how you can become a part of that. Um, there are some pre-recorded activities on Garifuna language, pre-recorded on Maya language, and those will be shared through the Port Library. And then, of course, for World Book Day, um, the San Esteban Community Library, they have an invited guest coming in that will be reading famous stories to school children. So that's part of, you know, kind of moving along with getting children interacting with new, uh, with Belizean authors. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say Belizean authors, everybody thinks the Ejel and Bekalam. Yeah. That's that the first thing, but we do have a lot of other, other writers yeah. mm -hmm. that have come out. Um, and then on April 20th at 9 a.m., they're celebrating authors and their books at the Benke Library. And I believe the National Heritage Library in Belmopan will also have the ability for authors to go in and record, yes. record themselves reading. So those are some of the main highlights. Did I miss any of the main ones, Ms. Feline? They'll see it on our Facebook page. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be on the Facebook page. All the, all the activities will be listed on the Facebook page. And of course, the BBIA, in past years, we'd be hosting a book fair mm -hmm. and also kind of a writers and publishing workshop. Uh, however, we're still getting over COVID. So later this year, we'll actually be hosting the book fair. And that book fair okay. normally features Belizean authors, Belizean texts. And then how you as a writer can get your work out there to be published. Mm -hmm. Of course, the name of your Facebook page? BBIA, um, well, Belize, that book, that industry, that association. association. Yeah. Okay, BBIA. BBIA. Uh, ladies, final thoughts for our viewers about World Book and Copyright Day. You know, I would like to encourage all our viewers. There are activities taking place at almost all the local libraries, especially ones in the municipalities. If you have the ability to take out your class, if you have the ability to take out your children to participate in these upcoming activities, if you are a writer of poetry, if you're interested in writing in indigenous languages, to check out the, um, the upcoming lecture at the Mexican Institute. It promises to be very informative, but also it is a modern take on how 
you can create your craft in an indigenous language. So I, that should be excellent. Mm. Mm. Well, Ishel just said it, you know, everybody <laughs> come out, come out. And then two for writers, for people in the book industry, you know, come with us so we can make the book industry association a stronger en entity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really time for us to revive all that we used to do, mm -hmm. you know, we, let the, as they say, we outside, you know, <laughs> and so it's time to be outside and, and expand what it is that we've been doing. Bring back the culture of reading, you know, bring back the love of reading, mm -hmm. the love of writing, you know, the love of this. Uh, it was a community type of affair back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ladies, thank you so much. So World Book and Copyright Day is April 19th? No. No? 23rd. 23rd? so many things happening <laughs> this week and next week but uh, thank you all so thank much for coming in this morning and uh, we hope to see more of what the library and bbia do in this initiative thank you thank, thank you. you i just remembered one more thing sure. so april 23rd no no because it, it it was a kind of a grassroots initiative all the poets you know we've been missing each other we've been missing the performance performance opportunities mm -hmm. so on on sunday yeah virtually the poets of Belize will be getting together. So more information, you know, we'll, we'll share it. So to amplify that and bring more people in, you know, be it Zoom, be it Facebook, however we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Expanding the network. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. We're going to take the break. We'll be back to wrap things up. Stay with us.